back even. Uh, let me start off by saying that uh, I was thinking about this, and the reason why I came up with this topic was that 45% uh, of the economy right now is a gig economy. I don't know if anyone is aware of that. Gig economy in the old days, people think of music, you know, you go and play at a wedding or bar mitzvah and so on. But now the gig economy is uh, with professionals and 45% are collecting 1099s instead of W-2s. So with that in mind, many people I know, especially those working for big companies, they work out at home. So when we're talking about setting up a network, a home network is not all that different from a home office network, which is really not all that different from a small office network. And when you look at it, as I go through it, it's really a small business network. So, and so basically, most people define the, a small business as $100 million or less. I don't do that, all right? Uh, because I, I, I've dealt with a company where they did less than $100 million, but he's got 17 locations. I had to hook up uh, 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 communications-wide to all 17 locations. I don't call that uh, a, a typical network. But to me, a small office network, or actually a small business network, or just really, I said anything that uses copper wiring. In other words, this is copper wiring, okay? Um, and uh, uh, the other type of wiring, or other types of communications, fiber optics, uh, then you also have satellite, then you have uh, uh, oceanic cable and so on. I, I exclude that from the uh, discussion. I also talk about a single base location, which is from a single building, all right? In other words, if it fits into a building, I don't care if it's, uh, well, I do have limitations. It can't be more than 60 stories high, and I'll, I'll go through that a little later with you. And if you use up 60 stories, that's a, you got a big business. And uh, the reason why I, uh, it's a single base location is because when you go from building to building, now you get into a different kind of communications. And uh, I'm talking about devices with IP addresses. Now, as you know, with everything now is the, most people don't realize the Internet of Things is IP addressing. I have to tell everyone that I have two biases, okay, I'm gonna tell you. One is, I don't believe in wireless, but I have to use it every once in a while. No, seriously, I don't trust wireless, uh, especially financial transactions, and if you do, you're, re you're really at risk. And the other thing I don't trust is social media. I don't know if you heard about, uh, you know, uh, Facebook. Uh, they're coming up with a cryptocurrency, and they said to Congress, trust us, we can run crypto, uh, uh, yeah. They just got fined $5 billion because they said that uh, they were going to maintain your privacy and your, uh, and your personal information, right? And in the very, very fine print, they will ensure that you have privacy on your encrypted personal information. And they say, well, the only thing that's encrypted is your password. Everything else we, we, we do make available to uh, other companies. So they got find, they got find $5 billion. My recommendation is you don't find them $5 billion. You find the entire profits for the year. That, that'll wake them up. But who got the $5 billion? Huh? Who got the $5 billion? The lawyers. <laughs> okay, so I had a couple of design criteria. all right? One is... Uh, it should be scalable. In other words, something that you can grow from really a simple um, a modem router to your PC, which is about the most simplest uh, you have in most homes, to uh, running anything that you can run in a building. It could be a library within the building, it could be a small business, it could be a coffee shop. And uh, the whole idea is to come up with things that has modularity so you can add to the network in small pieces. And um, I, I do work with a number of people with networks, and they set up their own networks. Uh, and I, I feel like saying, where did you come up with that cockamamie design? Because, you know, it's like uh, uh, designing a, a, a street grid, okay? And uh, typical, like in downtown Manhattan, you go around the corner, and, you know, before you know it, you get lost. Whereas most cities now, they have grids, okay? That's the way it should be designed. And... And uh, I'm trying to do this where I think for the average person, uh, you can actually put together your own network. Now, the most common thing is the cable, okay? Now, most people don't realize that when it comes to the cable, there are many different cable standards. And let me just skip to it, okay? And um, the two I have in red, the two most common one is the 5E and the 6A. Now, most people don't realize that when they buy an Ethernet cable, if there's no labeling on it, there's no insignia on it, 
it's 5E, those are the cheapies. How do you know uh, that you got a, a 6A? You don't know. What's the difference? It's shielded, okay? Shielded within the uh, plastic itself. Uh, 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 if at all possible, for certain types of wiring, you want to get this, all right? Now, as you can see, you have difference in speed. You have, t uh, this is really a, a, a 10, this is a 10 gigs, and this is one gig in speed. Now, the maximum you can go is uh, 1,000, uh, I'm sorry, 1,000 on the five, and I'll show you as you start connecting things, it drops to one-tenth of that, and if you drop of one-tenth of that, at least you're still in the 10, uh, you know, you still have the uh, high speed, okay? So, by the way, people have networks at home? Oh, come on, you have networks. Good. It's running fine, right? Good. Well, okay. Now, yes? Anything they can sell you. No, I'm serious about it. If it's not labeled, it's a cheap stuff. No, seriously, this is not labeled. You talking about the cable now? Yes, well, 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 they sell a cable uh, by the hundred It doesn't matter. They can sell you a hundred row, of, you know, a hundred. Uh, by the way, it's, uh, it's, uh, they, they, those rows are uh, 300 feet. In other words, the maximum length that this can be is 100 meters, which is 315 feet, and then you could cut it up to, to any size you want, okay? And then you put these connectors on. Uh, I, I have to tell you, I have crimpers. I don't. You know, put, putting these uh, um, connectors on, it's a pain. <laughs> you, first of all, you have to carefully put eight wires in one, match up, and they gotta be, you know, hold, you know, the, you know one to one, the same color, okay? The answer is, unless it's labeled, you don't know, assume you got the cheapest thing there is, and if you're looking for a bargain, you're gonna get this. Again, the limitation, the limitation maximum length on this is 100 meters. And I'll explain what that 100 meters is, okay? Regardless of whether it's Cat 3 or Cat 5 or uh, No, actually, uh, let me... Uh, okay. Uh, I don't have it here, but it actually, the higher the speed, the shorter the length, okay? In other words, the higher the frequency, the shorter is the length, that's why when we talk about a uh, uh, 5G, most people think of, wow, 5G is gonna cover the nation? No, it's only for like a five, 10 mile radius area. People don't realize that, okay? Yes? Uh, do you have any By the way, I hope to finish this uh, presentation, okay. Kevin. <laughs> 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 We're right about, about, you know, about the joke that whatever you get, they're gonna give you the cheapest piece of junk. Yeah. They can. Uh, the, is there any way to, to judge the quality or any indicator or something like that I haven't heard about yet? No, because, uh, you know, like... Uh, Without putting a test on uh, No, no, really. I mean, think about it. What's the difference, okay? This is shielded. By the way, STP means shielded twisted pair. Right. U is unshielded twisted pair. So to fit in a column, I, you know, I didn't abbreviate uh, the others, all right? But with 5E, it's unshielded. Okay, this is shielded, and if, if it's shielded, you're gonna meet the standard. Right, but okay? I, unless I put a ringing meter on it, I'm not gonna be able to tell for sure if there was. Or, or if you're a sport, you buy extras and you cut the cable to see if there's a shield. I'm serious about it. <laughs> no, actually, if you buy a row, okay? Because, you know, if, if, you, have, if you have a big, a big installation, yeah, cool. you're not gonna buy this stuff because it's gonna be expensive. What you're gonna do is cut it to length. In other words, you don't wanna have a 50-foot row to go five feet. Yeah. Okay, so what you want to do is cut it to length, keep it short, because the, uh, if you notice over here, on this one, uh, I don't have the uh, heading here, okay? In other words, to get the maximum speed at the full length, that means you can go higher speed than that. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is, like, like, like in the CPU, the shorter the length, the quicker it is, all right? And also, with Ethernet, you know how that works, it's collision. Collision means whoever gets there fastest gets the, gets the hit. And if I get back in time before you get there, I sca I'll get another hit. Yeah. This is not token ring, okay? Token ring is round robin, which takes a long time. Yeah. All right. What is shielding for? 
Shielding to cut down on noise. If it cuts down on noise, that means that you're going to be able to get a better transmission. All right, because you have to think about it. I mean, this this room. Look at all the electronics in here. You got uh, cell phones. You got uh, portable phones. You have remotes. You have. Uh, I mean, this world is wireless. Okay, I don't trust it at all. <laughs> By the way, with, with you know some of these things that, that, that you know Internet of Things. Tell me, why does someone need a, a, you know, the ability to use a cell phone to change the temperature on a thermostat? Not really necessary. I go over there and just turn it myself. Fingers, yes. Huh? Yeah, but you can't do it from outside the building. Why do I want to change it then, if I'm outside the building? Uh, Can I finish now? No, okay. Never okay. So, now, the other thing is that when we talk about all these wires, all right, the central part is what is called a network hub, all right? And this, believe it or not, is a little network hub, but this is electronic. Electronic means this is an electric, electronic switch. And with the uh, network hub, it's the, nothing more than just saying, if I would have uh, uh, put uh, wires here and put a PC here, I had another wire with another PC, I got my, uh, myself a little LAN. I can, you know, one talk to the other, all right? That's a network. Okay, yes? You mentioned network switch. There's a difference between a hub and a switch. Yes, I'm going to get into that, okay? But first I want to talk about, now this happened to electronic switch, but this actually is also de as defined a network hub, okay? But there's two types. There is the uh, regular network hub, which I'll get to, the, okay? Now, uh, so as you can see, you see, you go put all the different devices on it. In other words, it's not, it's more, now, if you have just a hub, you're really talking about a PC and a few things like a, a printer server. A, a switch allows you to get into all the other devices. Reason is because for some of these devices to work, you need the MAC address. You have to be able to manage a MAC address. MAC address, most people don't realize, is a unique address for every single device, okay? And if you cannot uh, address a MAC address, then you, you, you know, you can't hook it up. Like the smart TV, all right? You know, the Samsung smart TV that, that spies on you, okay? Uh, so if you happen to have it, okay, as you can see, let me get to the next one. Okay, so now, uh, th th this is a hub. Now, what I have in red, okay, is what is important about what is a hub, okay? The, the, uh, with a hub, it's, uh, it has no ability to handle the MAC address. It's not intelligent and it's not secure at all because what it is is that when the uh, uh, information is sent to the uh, hub, everything on that uh, hub gets identical information. And you know, when, you know, when, you know, if I'm talking, everyone will say, are you, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Now, with a switch, it's a little different. A switch is, I have a MAC address, I'm talking directly to the MAC address. So therefore, uh, uh, what, what happens is that when you have the hub... Uh, it's sort of like a party line in the old days. Yeah, well, it's, well, let me see if I can... Okay, uh, whoops. Okay, and the hub here, okay? It's not secure because what it is is that there's two problems, all right? The, it will run the speed of the slowest device you have on it. In other words, you can have something high speed, but because everyone gets a signal, you're running at the slowest speed. With the uh, intelligent, whoops, ah, these things. Spoiler alert. Where am I? Okay. In other words, with with a with an Ethernet hub. Okay, it, everyone gets the same thing. It's like a party line. Now, with this, it only goes to the MAC address and says, this is for you. So therefore, you can mix slow speed and high speed equipment on it, and it will all go the speed of what it's rated at, up to, and then on these hubs, all right? Uh, when you buy them, now this one happens to be uh, uh, 1,000, um, a megabits per second, 10,000 costs more, and so on. By the way, this little hub, which I use, because I, I deal with a lot of people and they don't have that many devices, it's like a $20 item. 
And if I want to not have the intelligence, it's two dollars cheaper. I'm more intelligent. I buy. I spend the two dollars. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, the device I have there is what I actually have. It's, but they come in all different sizes. All right, up to 48 ports. Now, uh, although I, I show you that there are many. Uh, you know, like there's a D-link here, and I, f I forgot what that is. Uh, this is doubled up. In other words, one on top of the other. If you have a rack mount unit, it, it's normally, it could be double or single. My recommendation is that if you have the desk room, you know, try to put the, get everything on one row, and I'll tell you why. When you put the uh, cable in, and you got one at the bottom of it, it's sort of like, you know, you, you, you know, when you have a whole lot of wires, getting to the one at the bottom is, is difficult, okay? But, but a lot of people, you know, if you've got to spread out 48 uh, ports, you know, you got to, it takes up a lot of room. Okay, now, uh, does anyone have Fios? You have Fios. This is a Fios um, uh, modem router, okay? They're stinkers, all right? <laughs> Notice there's only two LAN ports. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a GM uh, uh, mentality they have. Gee, it used to be four ports, four LAN ports. If we can eliminate two LAN ports, maybe we save a dollar, a million units. That's a million dollars. Why do they have two rather than one? Huh? It's only two now. Why? Because people uh, will complain and say, how do I hook up my smart TV? All right, so now this is a typical uh, a modem router, but it's really two different units uh, built into one. You have the access unit, which is, gives you the wireless uh, with, uh, in here. You have the uh, switch. This is the uh, hub or switch, but they only give you two ports. Now on... Uh, uh, Anyone has Spectrum, okay? Now, I've been to two locations, well, two different locations. Spectrum or Charter, in one location, they also have two ports. In another location, they have four ports. Now, I actually have four ports on this, and I got a call from a, a, a Verizon saying, we got a new modem router for you. And, uh, and, and the reason why was because the old one is IPv4 support. You want IPv6 support too. However, using it? Uh, they are using it, but you don't need it. Yeah. Okay. In other words, if you're going to go was it 256 times 256, uh, which is a lot. If you have more devices than that, uh, then you need it. Okay. But with, in other words, most people don't realize that the. Um, the, the, the internal IP address, everyone is using the same set of IP address, 192.168. So on. You, you know, it's just like you live in uh, building A, you live in building B, you have an apartment one, you have an apartment one, but they're different apartment ones. It's within your own, uh, within, within your own unit. But the address of what you have has to be unique. And those are given out by uh, uh, ICON, and they've, they ran out of addresses, so now they had to go to IPv6. So to, to satisfy that, they're coming up with these uh, new modems. And what they discovered was that a lot of people, and the other reason why they have modem routers is that, that they were giving you modems, and, and uh, they found that people said, oh, I need routers too. Hey, you know what? You remember in the old days uh, where uh, you, you buy a desktop and you put memory in, and you gotta get a memory board? Today, you buy a desktop, hey, the port is there. No, what, 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 no, is they're stealing the other guy's money, okay? Yes, Kevin? Um, I find that the, the providers use as much, uh, they're, they're as conservative as possible with the routers. Um, when they sell you a router, they're going to they're gonna reserve control for themselves. They're going to reserve the right to throttle you from your own router. 
they're going to reserve the right to do all sorts of things. And if you tell them you want to be able to control your own router, they tell you you've got to sign all sorts of releases and try to scare you away. No, no, they have a better way of doing that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like uh, if, you want, if you want to cut the cord, all right? I know a lot of people cut the cord. They said, oh, I have a three, four, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a, a three play or a two play. Oh, you want to cut the TV part? Of it? No problem. And then when they cut the TV play, they say, oh, wait a minute, your, t your, your internet cost just went up from $50 to $75 a month. Of course, yeah. Right. Yeah, you got the bundle. Okay. And, um, and, you know, it got so bad that uh, I, with, uh, I had uh, Time Warner for 20, over 20 years. And they were charging me for uh, the remote. Uh, they were charging me for the battery. I said, wait a minute, that's my battery that I'm using, okay? <laughs> I, they were try I got up to over $200, so I finally said to them, uh, I, you know, this is crazy. You're charging people who are coming to you brand new less than what you're charging me. He said, yeah, but you're a good customer. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, no. So, no, they meant that, all right? No, I don't know. I spoke to my provider at one point, and, and it became crystal clear to me that the longer we stayed, the, the, the deeper on the S list we wound up. Well... Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, what happened was that I switched over to Fios. Now, it's, by the way, a lot of people like to get Fios because it is much better. You know, like I was getting a lot of freeze frames in, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Time Warner. I don't, I don't know if you know what I mean by freeze frames. All of a sudden, the picture, and it freezes, and that's because it's so busy. Uh, and the reason is because they, they're really cheating on it. On a typical uh, frequency, uh, on, on a channel, analog channel, can give you eight standard channels, eight standard channels, or four high def channels. Okay, and they cheat by trying to stick in a ninth. Okay, and that's what happened. And then in the old days, what happened was everyone had a unique address, and I started complaining because I have the uh, I have a public library uh, a couple of blocks from me. It's the busiest library in, 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 in the United States. We, at, we have about 3.6, 3.7 million visitors a year, and it's busy. Uh, at 3.30, all the kids are out of school, and uh, it's, uh, you, got, you got to sit on the floor. That's how busy the library is. And 70% of the books are always out. Wow. Yeah. It is one of the best libraries. Yeah, and, and also, uh, of course, uh, de Blasio wants to change the whole uh, a way where you shouldn't be studying will have a different way of admitting kids into the schools. Well, you know that uh, we, you know uh, uh, most people don't realize that in New York City, the there, there is no such thing as the New York Public Library. There is actually each borough has its own library, yeah. and it's funded differently. Okay, huh? Actually, three. It's three. Uh, and, the, and the Bronx. And the Bronx. Brooklyn and Queens is different. Brooklyn and Queens is different, okay? Okay, now, uh, now these, are the basic, these are the basic components that I'm going to talk about in, when you build a, a, a network, all right? But now, uh, now you're going to say, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, I have a router like that. Oh, so you got the new one. <laughs> well, but here's what I do. I have well, one part goes to my smart TV. The other one goes to another router like the one you just held up in your hand. That wasn't a router. That was Can I tell you what? You're my perfect foil because that's the wrong way of doing it. But it works, but it's the wrong way of doing it, okay? Okay, but it works. Yeah. Huh? I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why, all right? Uh, but let me uh, also talk about uh, something di a little different. And these are power lines, okay? Now, uh, still exist? now suppose uh, you, uh, you have a house uh, or you have a duplex apartment and so on. You've got two different floors, all right? And, and uh, uh, you, you have to run a wire from one floor to the other, and your significant other says, you want to drill a what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or... Uh, you mean, you could, you could see that wire run along the wall? Well, I, you could say, well, we could bury it in, in, you know, behind the wall, and how much is that going to cost? Well, we have units like this. It's called 
the, 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 the proper term is home plug, but it's also sold as a power line. All right, now, this happens to be a two, a two in one unit. I have the other unit, I'm using it right now. I have a number of these at home. What it does is that you plug this into the AC part, okay, and you have another unit. In other words, if it was an AC in here, and let's say I have the uh, hub here. Okay. And that goes this way, all right? Okay. Now, you see the connector here? This is an AC. This is the, from the hub to the wire. What this does is it takes the AC wiring that you have in your house, the 14 gauge or 16 gauge wire, and because you have, like, so we turn on the lights, you know, uh, you, you may have a, a circuit breaker. That, you know, most people have a circuit breaker in an apartment, and you may have one for the kitchen, one for the bedroom, so on. Because you go to the same circuit panel, it doesn't matter. It goes to the other one, and let's say this is in the living room, and I have to go to the bedroom. I have another unit like this. That's all I need. And by the way, this I have a two, and you just plug it in. Uh, it then goes right into your PC. You're hooked up. Hard wire. What speed, what price? Okay. Uh, this goes up to 500 megabits per second. But in other words, these units come in different speeds. The 100, 300, 500, spend the money, get the 500, okay? What kind of money? Uh, well, the thing is, uh, uh, is it going by Black Friday or normal? <laughs> okay, now, um, th th this, this unit is a little, uh, th this unit's a slightly different. What it is is that the, uh, this is a two in one unit. I have a, r a range extender in this too. Okay, so in other words, not only is it transmitting the signal, but I'm also using this for uh, extending the Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, so what I do is that on this end, where I have the modem in, in, in the, like say in the kitchen, this is in, in the basement, okay, uh, and, try to, and try to get the Wi-Fi signal from second floor down to the basement. I get it right in the basement, right, right. I use this. Uh, this one cost me $60 with, for two units. One for the space unit and one, in other words, a node, and this is a base unit. Okay, well actually you could, tr you know, you could uh, uh, run it around. So, uh, is, is this uh, the perfect thing to use? No. It all depends on your home structure, because if you live in a, uh, uh, a co-op, it's different from a condo. A condo is basically a little living unit. A co-op is, well, you share an electrical bill. That means there's really no no separate uh, uh, no separate electrical. Huh? Making this stuff up? No, I used to live in a co-op. You live in a co-op? Yeah, but in Queens they have very different non-rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go back. All right. But that's generally true with condos. What, what you say with co-ops is generally true. Manhattan. Uh, a lot of condos, uh, like garden apartments, they have their own uh, circuits. Each one has their own because each one's paying their own bill. Okay, now, uh, I'm, the reason I bring this up is this is just one of the ways of how you can connect, you know, if you have a problem connecting. In other words, the idea is use a wire or with Wi-Fi, wireless, okay? But if, you, if, if the wireless can't get around the corner or you, like say, uh, uh, there was uh, one person uh, 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 living in a building, it's a concrete floor, you can't get to the bottom. Any downside to using the power line? <coughs> Let him finish about what you said. Okay, so what happened was that I just went from one to the other, and I just, in other words, in, because to drill a hole in the concrete floor, I was going through a whole lot of bits, but I just follow where they put, you know, when the building went up, I just follow where they already had the uh, wiring, and just snake the wiring through. Yeah. Is there a downside? Uh, most of the time it will work, okay? Uh, it depends where your uh, 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 electrical panel is, okay? In other words, if, if you have to go through multiple panels, then it's, it slows up. But if you're going st straight to a, 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 a panel, now the only thing that uh, I, uh, someone brought up that I haven't tried yet, but I, I don't think it's affected at all. Some people, what they do is, like in the old days, you had to you know, put in the fuse, you screw it in, you kind of make sure you don't get burnt on it. Now you put a breaker in, okay? And a lot of electricians 
are faking it, all right? They say, oh, you got a 15 amp circuit? I can make it a 20 amp circuit. And they put a, a breaker in there that's 20 amps, not realizing that, hey, it's still 15 amps because you have a 16 gauge wire and you need a, a, a 14 gauge wire to be 20 amps. So what happens is that the, that the, 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 the it doesn't trip. Okay, when you go, when, you know, no worries, the breaker doesn't trip. It goes over 15 amps. You know what happens? It goes over 15 amps and it doesn't trip. The, the, space the, the, y, the y heats up. When the y heats up, amperage goes up. And when the amperage goes up, voltage goes down and equipment fails. Well, the place catches on fire. Yeah. Are there different, different brands? Is there one you like better? Uh, yeah, whatever the price is, because they're all, you know what this is like is a commodity item now. This is a commodity item. Uh, I have a, a TrendNet, I have D-Link, I have, um, uh, what's the one that, uh, Action, I have Action Tech, okay? I have three different brands. And they're all interchangeable. Now, the only, th now, by the way, can I tell you how I choose which one to get? Notice this here, okay? I find that uh, this one, the, 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 the unit with it, is small so that when I plug the, in, into an outlet that's duplex, some units you can only put one unit. And you can't find the you can't find the other outlet. Okay, so so that's the only downside is that some of them are big. Yes. Hank, is the data being sent over the power line, or is it wireless? Is it sure, the data could be over the power line. So is it going to make it to your neighbor's house? What if you have no, no, it's at the circuit breaker. You're on the same kind of the same circuit. Yeah. Oh it, well, well, you know what? If 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 your neighbor's sharing your uh, uh, electrical circuit, I guess you're paying his bill. Well, everybody's sharing the same circuit. Huh? You could be. Ranges from one to <laughs> That's four. <laughs> if you're sending RF over the power line. This is not RF. Okay. Yes. Can you put a uh, short extension on it? It has to be a heavy-duty extension. Does that work? Oh, yeah, well, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, let me tell you the other thing about this, all right, is that the power line home plug standard is it has to be duplex transmission, therefore you cannot have a surge protector in it, okay? When you put a surge protector, there's a diode that keeps the signal from uh, returning. But just a, a regular short extension so you can get two things in the w Without signal. surge. No surge. No surge, okay? So in answer to your question, uh, your neighbor probably has a surge uh, connected on his end. Okay. okay, so that's that. And uh, I use that. And uh, now the other thing is that uh, on a uh, in the old days, when I say old days, they used to sell printers where you have uh, uh, you could use it as a printer server. Today, everything is wireless. I don't know if you're aware of that. Okay, and with a wireless. Uh, uh, Again, I have a bias. I don't like anything wireless because uh, I, you can hack it very easily. You know how often I, I would say, show me all the SSIDs available where I am. You see, oh, HP printer and so on. Or I feel like, gee, I think I'm going to send them a whole bunch of garbage, okay? And you can and use up the paper. And ink. Yes. That's because two, two things you get from HP. You, you, you've done it before, right? You install, no, two of my biggest customers were hacked through their printer. Okay. Yes, it, no, it is. Okay. Anyway, one of the things nobody seems to bother to do uh, is to set up that um, HP tells you if you're not going to use any of the servers, deactivate them. If you're not going to use any of the, uh, the wi if you're not using wireless, deactivate it. They, pr they showed you how to do that, but it's too many finger points and nobody bothered. And it doesn't come out of the box that way, so they don't they ignore it. Okay, today, today, you don't find a, a, a printers uh, with Ethernet on it, but this is a printer server little box. It sells for about 20 bucks, okay? And as you can see, I have here a little power here for uh, 5 volts. I have a Ethernet wire here, and I have a USB here. So if you happen to have a USB printer, cheap way of converting it into a printer server. Okay. 
who makes this? This one is uh, IO gear, but there's a number of, I, I actually have about four or five of these at home. Yes? My only headache with those boxes is that they're very, very dumb, and sometimes they can have a problem with the protocol. But I have no that. problems. Okay. Okay? Uh, maybe you speak too fast for them. <laughs> <laughs> actually, um, the headache with uh, business printing, as opposed to home printing, you're going to see one or two sheets at a time. Business printing job could be an entire image, uh, 100 or 200,000, you know, or, or even 1,000 square inches of image. So that's a huge protocol. Well, if, 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 if you're running a, uh, a home office, all right, uh, in, when you uh, buy a printer, one of the things that most people don't look at in terms of spec is, um, is the product life cycle, okay? The reason, what the product life cycle is, how many pages you can print in a day, because when you do continuous printing, it builds up the heat and the electrical requirement on it. So what you want is a product life cycle where how many pages can you print in a day, okay? But again, this is a little nice device to have. And now uh, I have a device similar to this for something else, all right? And it's about the size of this except my son came over and he says, what do you got there? I told him, he says, can I borrow it? Well, <laughs> but let me tell you what it is, okay? Um, yeah. On item two, it says connected ISP device. Can you connect a uh, TV to that? To, to do what? Smart TV. To, to what device? Uh, a switch? Well, what you've got there, the power line. Well, first of all, about a smart TV today, all right? The smart TV uh, has, is, is, is one of two things, that it has a, a, a wireless that you can get to or there is an Ethernet connector to it. Most of them have an Ethernet connector. That would work. Yes, that will work, okay? And, and you know, the thing is that the default is Samsung will spy on you. <laughs> no, I'm serious about it. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, Not if you root their TV. No. By the way, uh, uh, by the way, I, I didn't bring it because I, I'm using it right now. I have all these uh, uh, home assistant devices, and sometimes you have to say "Hey Google" or um, "OK Google." Sometimes I don't have to say that, and it ta starts talking to me. Okay, no, I, I'm, I'm serious about it. And I also, I also have a, uh, I have the Amazon uh, uh, Echo uh, Alexa Echo. I found a way where I, got, I can get them to talk to each other. <laughs> no, all you, all you say is, hey Alexa, what's your name? And then the other one starts, you know, and then you get the other one going, all right? <laughs> but what, but the, the problem I have there is that once you start training that, is that I'm, I'm at home, I'm talking, I'm not talking to them, and all of a sudden they come back. And what's embarrassing, I have a, uh, uh, I have a smartphone, I'm, I'm at a meeting, and all of a sudden, they're saying, wait, wait, who's talking to you, you know? <laughs> okay, any other questions before I move on? Yes. Uh, Nick, you said it doesn't use RF to put data on the power line. How does it put the data on the power line? Well, what is data to begin with? It's voltage, isn't it? Okay, the voltage is ones and zero. And, and wait, wait, how, how do they determine what is one and a zero? How do you determine? Yeah, how do you determine that data is a one or a zero? No, there's only one way. Five volts or more is a one, and less than five volts is a zero. Then that's how, you know, like a sine wave, okay? No, that's how, that, 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 that's how zeros and ones are treated. Your AC power line, you have 117 volts. You have pulses, you have pulses, okay? Your AC is 60 cycles, okay? What is it when you have a cycle, 60 cycles? You have a sine wave. So it's, it's how you... It's, it's how you divide up that sine wave. And the question is, if you're doing that at 500 megabits per second, how is that not RF? It's not, it's not transmitting radio through the air. It's well, well now, now wait a minute now, okay? On, on this wire, when I said that the maximum is 100 meters, all right? It's whatever comes out, it's not transformed in any way. I'm going to tell you where, the, where data is transformed, where it uses radio waves, okay? And that's mesh. I'm going to cover that. All right. With mesh, 
uh, I, uh, um, uh, how many people have the uh, Google uh, uh, Mesh? No one? I can't even spell it. You can't spell it? M-E-S-H. No, you can spell it. No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll cover it, okay? Actually, it's very good, but it's very expensive. All right? It's listed for $300, and it costs you 250 to buy three units. Okay? But it works very well. And I'll, I'll, I'll go through it a little later, okay? Now, I didn't bring it with me because it actually is part of this. I had a separate unit. You can also buy a separate range finder. Okay, I covered this. Now, as you can see, this is really this unit. And this is the twin unit to it. Okay, this one takes up the whole duplex outlet. This one doesn't because the, the pin is way up here, so I can just turn it upside down or at the bottom. Okay. All right. So what, what's a what? Yeah. Have you ever had a problem putting a, a, a one of those tiny extensions to put in your socket? Uh, have you tried that? Well, well, uh, when you say, what do you mean by tiny extension? When you go into a socket, nothing is tiny. No, that was a, um, the only thing tiny I remember with my kid, she put a bobby pin into a socket, and boy, <laughs> well, that was tiny. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I got a junk store, I was given a, a, a bag full of one foot long extensions yeah. to plug into, so you, to solve that problem of ganging up on a, on a duplex socket. I have that, by the way. Yeah. No, no, seriously, I, I actually have that. I've plugged a few of them in and not always gotten good results. <laughs> have you had any headaches with them? No. No, okay. Uh, you got to remember that uh, this is not polarized. In other words, one of my polarized is that you find that one is uh, slightly yeah, smaller than the other. Right. All right. And with these little sockets, uh, some of them are polarized. That way, if you could force it in, uh, but it might be that, you know. Not happy. Right. Okay. <laughs> You know what I mean by pol by the way, does everyone know what I mean by polarized socket? No. Okay, as you can see over here, the, um, they're identical, but in the polarized, one is slightly smaller than the other, and you gotta, you know, some of these, like, like I have a, uh, a UPS, when you plug things in, you, you know, this is a smaller end. The, uh, the bigger end has a little spade on it that makes it a little bigger. Right, okay. So it has to go in in a set way. Yeah, but what do you what do you do for ground? Well, that doesn't have ground. It's, it's usually, ground. It's it's usually ground. a little wire that comes off. Oh, it's it's really the socket. Okay. By the way, the, the socket that uh, Kevin is talking about, I picked it up at TCF a couple of years ago. I, I bought a whole batch yeah, of them. Yeah, it was a bag of them. Right? Yeah, I bought a whole bag of them. Okay. So what a range extender is, and nothing more than taking uh, that wire and putting it into a, uh, 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 you know, plugging it in. You got the AC, and you're able to transmit a longer distance. All right, now, what is a mesh network? Okay, someone was talking about a mesh. Mesh is nothing more than, like say, um, the Google Mesh is a, is a good example, right? You buy three units, one is the, uh, is the base unit, and then, but these all three, are, let's say I have three, all right? So that I can use this to transmit wireless. Now, as you can see here, if this unit is out, and I had that many units, let's say I have six units, I, uh, two sets. If this is out, I can go from here to there, or if this is out, I can go from, uh, uh, from here to, to there, and, and in other words. So a mesh is not fixed from point to point. It will go to the best routing it will take, all right? Now, the, the distance it covers, okay, you gotta be careful with this because they say that each node can cover 1,500 square feet, okay? Now, you gotta be careful with that word, 1,500 square feet. They sound like, wow, okay? But what's 40 by 40? 40 by 40 is 1,600, okay? And you have to realize that it's about, you know, it's, it's like if you hit the uh, edge of it, okay? In other words, if, in other words it's really, when they say uh, 40 by 40, it's really 20 this way and 20 this way. 
Okay. Yeah, it gets small very fast. All right. So on three units, they say it covers 3,500 square feet. Again, what's that? 60 by 60? It sounds like a lot. Okay. But then if you can extend it, okay. But it works very well. Works very well. Um, but it's not cheap, but it works very well. There are a, a couple other companies with it, but I find that the installation of this is very easy to use. It's uh, $250, you get three units, so that uh, if you have this, uh, you stretch this. By the way, if you have a wire from the port here, you know, from your hub, you can go 100 meters before you hit this hub, okay? What's 100 meters? 315 feet. So you can go 300 feet out and then extend it out another 20, 30 feet, okay? And actually, with three of them, you can go out like almost uh, 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 another 100 feet. So you, 400 feet is a lot. Now, th uh, and, and, okay, this, I'll, I'll go over that a little later, okay? So, but uh, in terms of uh, using the Google Hub, the, the, the Google Mesh, to join in with a regular big mesh, uh, I haven't t tested that at all, and I, I wouldn't even try it. I, I, you know, I just keep it to myself. So, so Google Mesh is just uh, kind of a network setup that you can purchase. Correct. In other words, uh, in other words, if you have just a router, now you you have a, a, a couple of uh, choices there, right? Okay? You have a router, but then you go to another router to extend the access. Oh, yes, that's the other thing here, is that the transmission from here to here is radio. So it's a, it maintains a high speed, okay? If you use the range extender, it fades with this, all right? Now, most people don't realize that when you go from, let's say, a, a hub to a hub, right? You're going through the, uh, Cross the the the, the uh, communication. So if this is a, a, a 1,000 meg megabits per second, if I have another hub here or a router, it's one tenth the speed. It's one tenth the speed. That's why when I said that uh, when you said you have the router go to a router, you are going one tenth the speed. Okay. So how do you get around that? That's what I'm going to cover. Okay, but you understand what I'm getting at, okay? Because what happened is that you're really going from a, un, a, a hub to a hub, you're going to lose. One, you're, you're going to run at one-tenth of speed. Okay, now the other thing that uh, I, I had given my son to use was a little box here. It's called an NAS, Network Attached Storage, all right? And, uh, and it, it looks very similar to this box, okay? What it is is that... Uh, uh, you have an Ethernet port, and you can stick a uh, external USB uh, uh, solid-state drive, hard disk drive, or even a flash drive, and just put it on the network. Mm -hmm. And so, if you want to move data from one machine to the other, it's you know you just put it in storage here. So this is v v very very cheap, very easy to use. Now. Uh, uh, how, well, I, I shouldn't use the word cheap, okay? What happens is that uh, these little tiny units, the reason why my son was uh, interested in it was because uh, uh, a very few people make it. I think the, the one that uh, is made is Ad, uh, Ad, Adonix, A-D-D-O-N-I-C-S, Adonix. Uh, they have one. It sells for about $70, all right, for a unit like this. And the reason why is because you could put a terabyte, two terabytes, three terabytes. You can really, you know, you, you really, it's a network attached storage, okay? Now, the reason why these little units, they're, they're, you know, they're not sold as widely now is because Western Digital, Seagate, and so on, they make drives now that is, in a, besides being a one terabyte uh, external drive, it's a network attached storage drive. So they put that uh, ethernet in. They charge a little more for it, and people say, oh, it's already made, I just, you know, plug it right in, yeah. I noticed on my router that I got, um, it has a couple of USB ports. I can, I can put in a, an encased one terabyte drive or something else as an additional storage space. Is this similar? You have to find out if that USB is meant for storage. 
Some of them is meant for powering up. Some is meant for power on, uh, a power on startup. So you got to be careful, because like on the um, uh, on the uh, UPS systems, some of them have a USB port. They're not meant for storage. They're meant for being able to power on. Okay. So this is a nice thing to have now. I don't have a, 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 a graphics for this. But how is that different from a network server? Okay. A network server is really a PC. And it has everything on it. Uh, it has storage. It has whatever you want on it. So how does a network attached server, uh, a network attached storage differ from a network uh, ser a server? Is that a network server is an application uh, unit where you're sharing, let's say, storage, all right? But let's say you're sharing the same files. And so what happens is the network server has lock and release. So whoever is addressing a, the hard, hard disk drive in the, uh, uh, you know, a record, you can't get to that record unless I release it, unless I'm done with it. Okay? So, but for a lot of small businesses, those are vertical applications. A good example is uh, inventory, all right? Someone wants to buy something, okay, and they have a, uh, 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 the basket, uh, you know, uh, you know to, to run a business, then you need a network server that will do a lock and release uh, on it. And those are vertical applications that you have to find out, you know, what it's for. Uh, however, if you happen to have a, uh, uh, I remember my uh, brother-in-law, he had a, uh, a, a pharmacy and he had a whole bunch of units and, he, and, and the uh, server was just to find out uh, what interaction there was with different drugs. He's not writing on, he's just retrieving data, so it doesn't matter. You can use a network attached uh, storage for that because you're not, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have to lock it because you're, you're just reading it. But if you have to do update on it, then you need a network server. And that makes a difference between a network server and a network attached storage unit. Yeah. Oh, he fell asleep. Go ahead. What do you see as the difference in price on this time? The what? Putting a server versus having network it all depends on the application because, you know, many of these applications, like a vertical application, what kind of storage they need, what kind of database they need, uh, 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 what additional information might be needed. You, you know, it's a vertical application. By the way, I, I, uh, I did some statistics. Two-thirds of uh, all installed PCs now are running Windows 10. Uh, the total of uh, Windows 7 and 10 is 84% of the installed base. The rest are still XPs. In the no, worldwide. 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 The rest are still uh, XP. And you know where, what industry is, is, is stuck with that? Retail. retail. Medical. Medical. Whoa. And the reason why is, no, retail, you know, it's, you know, retail is like, you know, that's easy stuff. The medical is that you, it's a customized application, and these guys haven't upgraded their application to be uh, Windows 10 compliant. Huh? Because the ports are well, no, okay. Let, let me give you an example of why uh, it's not easy, all right? You buy a CAT scanner. Mm -hmm. It's a million dollars. Right. Now, it running, it's running with an XP. <laughs> oh, wow. You know how much work you got to put into it, you know? It's, it's a lot of, it's, it's expensive. They're not going to, oh, let's buy a new CAT scanner because now we're running uh, Windows 10. Forget it. They, they use it. No, they, they would never, uh, let's see, uh, the scanners across the street from uh, Bellevue, they've got seven uh, scanners in the building. Like bucks. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, and the problem is that uh, when you do an operating system upgrade on these vertical applications that use customized uh, uh, drivers, very expensive. Yeah. Okay, so uh, by the way, that's the reason why uh, two months ago, uh, uh, in an unusual thing, because Microsoft said no more patches for XP <laughs> end of 2014. They released new patches because they realized exactly. you just can't, okay? Okay. And you know what? XP is reliable. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, other than the security issue, but you know, it, it, people were familiar with it. Uh -huh. And now, can you imagine uh, you're in a hospital and uh, the, the technician said, wait a minute, uh, we, you can't operate yet. I got to go to what page to reference. Uh, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so. There are several multi million dollar selling on Town Square that are running on XP. Okay, so uh, let me get back to this quickly, okay? So basically, I have the ability now by using an electronic switch. You could put uh, game consoles on, uh, you know, all these different devices, TV sets, as you can see, and you can talk to each other. Now, getting to back what you're saying is that if you put the switch as the top end, you put a modem, uh, uh, you, 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 you put a modem router here, right? You need access, just come here and just, it's one, it's, it's one. In other words, you don't have to drop the speed. When you go from router to router, okay? But you're not, you're attaching directly and it goes right in here. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can expand on this, all right? But you have any questions on that? Okay, now, if you think about it, this is one, using one hub, a smart hub, and let's say I put this on a floor. And this is another one where, you know, look at all the different things you can do, okay? Now, this one right here is nothing more than just that previous page. Now, I, I, uh, I, I can't find the graphics for it because very few people really do it, but I find that this works. Now, if I hook up a wire, let's say, from one of these ports, and I, let's say, come here, this could be the basement, first floor, second floor, third floor, and so on. Guess what? I now have a backbone that I can wire the whole building. And on this side, because it's on this side now, okay, I have the, I have the internet, and I have a, 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 a network attached storage unit, which I can do backups on. So everyone here, I, I, you know, I, I didn't draw it, but if it's connected here, they have access to the internet without using, you know. Now, the, the access, uh, now, obviously if I'm hook, hooked up to a router, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, it's gonna slow it down. But there's nothing to prevent me from running a wire straight to the second floor, straight to the third, third floor, and so on. Uh, this could be the accounting unit, this could be the inventory unit, this could be a factory, and so on, uh, you know, in a, in a small business. Now, um, whoa. XP. Uh, I just want to get to the last page. Uh, I gotta look the other screen. Where's the mouse? Where's the keyboard? Here. F5. F5. Escape first. I want to show you this. Uh, where is it? Where's the mouse? It's up on top in the center. I want to get to the bottom. <laughs> okay, all right. So, in that kind of arrangement where you're wiring up the whole building, okay, if you were to set your wireless routers with the same SSID, in other words, you know what the SSID is, right? For wireless uh, access, okay, so, you know, you give it a name, but if you give it the same name, and you use the same password for each one of them, people don't realize that I can go from one floor to the next floor and I'm still uh, hooked up to the, to, to the system, okay? Now, have you, now I don't know if there are cer like, uh, certain locations you go to. You seem like, oh gee, it's uh, like, uh, boy, they got some, uh, uh, some Wi-Fi. I can go from one floor to the other and I still get the signal. But this is cheating, okay? This is how you do it, okay? Now, if you hook up a router to the switch, you got LAN ports and you got WAN ports, okay, on the router. What you do is um, you hook up where you go LAN to LAN, okay. Don't go, don't go to the WAN port, go from LAN to LAN, so you actually continue the uh, extension of the switch. Uh, then over here, I have is that all you have to do is that all you need is a different subnet address. In other words, typically it'll be like, you know, 192.168.00, okay? You can have one be 10, 20, 30, and so on. 
So you can have each of the routers with a different subnet address, but use the same SSID and use the uh, same password. Now, there's no, nothing to prevent you from saying the uh, accounting department, let's say, all right, or the payroll department, you give it a different SSID because no one, you don't, you know, you're sharing the same wiring, but you don't want them to get into the network. Or, uh, I'm only joking now, okay? You can have an SSID for deplorables and an SSID for snowflakes, okay? And they won't talk to each other. Any questions on this? Now, now what I'm also recommending, if you run wires, okay, like say, uh, 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 let me do this. Yeah, because once you run the wire behind walls and, and through the floor, you don't want to use a cheap wire, use a good wire. Because if you have to upgrade, it's very expensive to do the upgrade. I mean, this is expensive to run if you have to go from floor to floor. Okay, spend the money, get, get you know, that, that, that's what I meant, okay? Actually run two wires just to make sure, seriously. Uh, I was just going to say, in New York City, what I've done with a, a one client, two wires every floor because he has vermins uh, biting on wires. <laughs> no, I'm serious, no, right, Brian? Even if something goes wrong. Yeah, okay. Put high voltage on the wires and that electric, electric <laughs> <laughs> No, actually that's caused the number of fires. Bugs in the system, then it's rats in the system. Okay, now, the, uh, the, the other thing is that uh, we, we know that um, uh, what I did in one building was that uh, I put the, um, the modem router in the middle of the building. In other words, this has six stories, okay? I put it on the third floor. Why? Because I, be, uh, because I want to be able to make maximum use of the shortest wire from one end to the other. Because if I put it in the basement, then I go from the basement and the wire goes all the way up to the six, uh, you know, six stories. Now, uh, uh, this is not apartment buildings where you have eight foot ceilings, but you know, in a typical loft and so on, you got 12 foot ceilings and so on. Okay, so you don't want the long wire. Also, uh, if you think about it, if, like say, uh, I have 300 feet, 315 feet. And it's not as a crow flies because you find things, you know, go in and out. Figure on half of that, it's 150 feet. Divide that by 15 feet, for, go from floor to floor. That's 10 stories up one way, 10 stories down. 20 stories, that's a, that's a good length, okay? I can maximize on, all right? Yeah, but you come under fire department headaches with that one. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so does it, I'm open to questions. So, you, but so, so basically, if you're gonna expand, get, get yourself a little hub. These are cheap stuff, okay? Spend the money, this is a El Cheapo. By the way, I, I picked up six of these for a buck. And, uh, you know, okay. And uh, if you want to share a printer, you can buy a wireless printer, but this thing will, you know, uh, you don't have to be wireless, okay? Uh, good, I put everyone to sleep. <laughs>